very much for joining me. It's Saturday. I hope everyone's enjoying their weekend. I want to give a shout out to those of you that sent in um, PayPal donations that were very generous and generously bought me cups of coffee and have joined me on Patreon. God bless you guys. Thank you so much for thinking of me. You might recognize this as Campy Flagre. Yeah, that's that super volcano there in Italy. All the ones that are marked in red. Okay, these are earthquakes that are less than one kilometer in depth. They're very shallow. We got one in the bay and um, another one over here by, um, yeah, actually, a, what is it, a, a freeway, a highway? There, I noticed that there was a swarm. And it seems to be following a fault line from uh, the caldera. Can you see them there? Yeah, you know, we got a 4.4, .4, um, a 4.1, um, a 1.2. I did put that they were shallow. And there is multiple really shallow earthquakes, less than a kilometer in depth, um, close to the uh, harbor here. Different research that I looked into today. It took me hours to put all these earthquakes. These have all occurred within the last 30 days. But Campy Gray is fed by multiple dike intrusion. So it kind of looks like to me, at least to me, my own personal opinion, looks like we got dike intrusion, a fissure that runs up along the bay here and goes up to the center of this caldera. Actually, it's one of many volcanic vents. This is Solfaterra, and people have built right up to the edge. Look it up on Wikipedia. They'll call it a dormant volcano. Well, there's no such thing as a dormant volcano, and the sulfuric acid gases that come in, come up are definitely an indication it's not dormant. So what I did here just recently was draw draw out a red line so you can see what it looks like to me as a dike intrusion. A fault where magma is coming up, creating pressure, creating these um, small but very shallow earthquakes. Less than a kilometer. So let me zoom in and we'll follow it along. It goes all the way up to this, yeah, this vent for the uh, volcano. And it comes down along over here, along the, uh, the, the beach of the harbor, right there. In the last month alone, there has been six magnitude three or larger earthquake. One being a magnitude 4.4. .4. That's just within the last month. Um, there was, let's see, two 3.2s, a 3.1, a 3.3, and a 3.5. There was a research paper that I read that just came out, maybe today or yesterday. It's an intriguing case as to the densely populated caldera of Campi Flagre, southern Italy which underwent several periods of unrest over the past seven, seven decades, 70 years, sparking considerable consideration and a vivid scientific debate on their causes and the future scenarios. What's going to happen? A half a million people live within the active caldera, particularly submerged beneath the bay of Pachuyua, sorry, I'm not, I'm not going to try and insult you guys by trying to pronounce the name. Um, according to Volcano Discovery, there's been 24 earthquakes within the last 24 hour. Uh, that would be classified as a swarm. Yeah, a half a million people live within this act of caldera. Um, yeah, it makes it one of the most high-risk volcanoes in Europe in an, air, in an area that would be swamped by boiling pyroclastic flows of hot ash and gas in the event of a caldera eruption. And that's according to Italy's Civil Protection Department. Since 2005, the caldera is in a new unrest phase, they say, manifested by increased ground uplift, 
seismicity and hydrothermal activity. The volcano's plumbing system, including its shallow crustal roots, yeah, the dike intrusion, is lacking. They haven't really done that much research, and you think they would have because you got so many people living there. And how many thousands of tourists visit the area every day? They believe that Campi Flagre has been erupting for at least 47,000 years. And its last eruption was in 1538. But it does go or undergo periods of significant unrest, one of which has been ongoing, this recent one, since 2005. During these restless periods, the region shakes with frequently mostly small earthquakes. One of these minor quakes caused a wall to collapse at the historical site in Pompeii. This was just last Thursday, June 5th. Um, a minor earthquake in southern Italy caused the partial collapse of a wall, a portion of a vault at the Pompeii archaeological site, authorities said. The quake was a magnitude 3.2 on Thursday morning, and it was one of the latest in a series of tremors centered on the nearby Campi Flagre supervolcano close to the city of Naples. Maybe it's a way of God telling people to wake up. Yeah, they're going to end up encased in ash, um, just like the people of Pompeii were. The Italian civil protection elevated the alert level from base to warning. And that has been ongoing since 2012 due to the uplift and the earthquakes and the geochemicals such as CO2 or excuse me CO2 emissions um, that have been going on. They recently discovered a weak layer of crust below the floor of Italy's Campi Flagre, um, causing the caldera to undergo periods of Earthquakes, um, you know, the unrest, the uplift. According to the new study, it was published yesterday, June 5th, or day before yesterday, excuse me, I'm, I lost a day, it's June 7th. This layer sits between 1.8 and 2.5 miles deep. And we got all these shallow earthquakes that are less than a mile. It is made up of rock called tuff. Just like Yellowstone, they got a huge layer of tuff there in Yellowstone. But this layer has been weakened by multiple magma intrusions over tens of thousands of years. Magma has been coming up into this layer, which is only 1.8 to 2.5 miles in depth. Now, I know with Yellowstone and studying Yellowstone over the years, that they've had roads actually melt. People have reported the bottoms of their shoes, the soles of their shoes has melted. Have you not noticed that living there? When we have episodes of shallow earthquakes, less than one kilometer in depth, have you not noticed that the floors of your homes are not a little bit warmer? Let me go down here to uh, the coast or the beach of the harbor. Let me go over here. This is where it's on. <laughs> yeah, less than one one mile in depth. Depth. One kilometer. One kilometer is about a little more than, oh, it's somewhere around 3,080 feet. Have you not noticed? Tough is a light rock made of compressed volcanic ash that acts like a sponge for volcanic gases rising from the magma chamber and it sits at least um, 7.5 miles or 12 kilometers below the surface that's how thick this tuff is when these gases begin to saturate the ground the pores of the rock they cause the rock to deform and even break creating earthquakes so that being the case okay let's bring this out and look at the different which would probably be fault lines different clusters where we've been having earthquakes in the last month we got one area here 
1.3, 1 1.0, 1 1.2. Let's see, oh, 1.0 up over here. You're not noticing the gases that are coming up. There's another area. Well, there's a whole bunch over here. <laughs> I don't live there. I'm sorry. I shouldn't be laughing. Okay, over here we got a cluster. Um, a 2.8, a 3.2, another 3.2, a 2.5. 2.3 one right in the middle of the parking lot did you think it was exhaust from the automobiles that you were smelling um, a 2.8 a 1.0 and a 1.3 I got into uh, learning about volcanoes after the eruption or actually before the eruption of one of the Canary Islands which was El Euro uh, prior to the eruption, which took place under the water, under the coast there of La, uh, La Restinga, you can see the discoloration. But prior to that, um, this area was all evacuated because of the gases that were coming up and they were making people sick. The first sign of the eruption that was happening was that dead fish were rising to the surface of the ocean because the government of Spain had live gas readings um, posted there on the island I knew about two weeks before the eruption that it was coming but I don't know of any uh, live gas reading that is available to the public there at Campi Flagre I don't know of any of them that are, are publicly available they only had about 80 people that they had to evacuate from La Restinga compared to a half a million. The politicians and the local media really downplayed the coming threat. It ended up erupting in an area where they completely did not expect it to erupt. You know, um, unemployment was fairly high and they really depended on the local fishing and tourism to keep the economy growing. Well, Restinga was actually evacuated twice. Um, people demanded to be able to go back into their homes. They were willing to risk uh, their lives and the health effects, which was, you know, the mild dizziness, um, yeah, maybe, um, you know, higher blood pressure, you know, effects upon the body. They believe that the presence of a multi-level storage system here at Campi Flagre with a deeper um, reservoir and a shallower zone. Um, it's a sill. It's like a ledge where the magma um, comes up to and then levels out and then it melts it and rises up again. Kind of think of like water running down the window upside down. Um, that would be the dike intrusion from the sill. They also know that there is a partial melt zone, which is probably between 7 to 8 kilometers deep. So 7 kilometers is about 4.3 miles, but they don't say how much of that rock is melted. Think of a sponge and the little holes in a sponge. Well, those would be the pockets of melt of rock that has melted, but they have not. Um, I couldn't find anything about what percentage of the rock um, that is melted. They say they have not noted any significant, significant volumes of melt um, within three to four kilometers in depth. So there is melt there, but it's not significant. I would like to know how much of the pockets of melt have, yeah, melt. What is the percentage? three to four kilometers. So that would be about one and a half to about 2.4 miles. So between one and a half again to two and a half miles in depth, they do have pockets of melt, uh, melted rock, but they claim it's not significant, but don't tell us what the percentage is. They do know that there is an area 1.5 miles in depth or 2.5 kilometers where they have repeated magmatic magma intrusion. It comes up, um, yeah, it melts the rock, and then what they call it, freezing. It, it hardens. 
and this has happened repeatedly and it's within this area of tough which is you know making the tough more brittle and easier you know for the gases to come up they know that it's coming up from dike intrusion they say that we expect that an eruption would occur if the magma volume available to a dike intrusion is enough for a for it to propagate until it reaches the surface this may occur with a single large intrusion or if successive magma pulses are close enough in a space and time to merge before solidifying in their final statement of the study they said this um, points out to two possible scenarios in the event of magmatic unrest the first scenario involves the upward movement of smaller volumes of magma which may stall near the boundary between um, the tough and the carbonate layer eventually cooling without reaching the surface so-called failed eruptions however if these volumes are continuously replenished in a short period of time preventing cooling they could eventually become eruptive as occurred before um, in the eruption in 1538 they also believe that the second scenario involves a large volume of magma that directly rises up ascends from about uh, from around all oh, 4.9 almost 5 miles or 8 kilometers in depth potentially reaching the surface yeah 80 people to evacuate compared to a half a million big difference have you noticed any of the things that I have mentioned to you about uh, the roads seemingly melt maybe you thought it was the Sun that was beaten down on the roads um, yeah have you noticed anything like that yeah it is not a dormant volcano please put your thoughts and comments down below thank you very much for watching please like share and subscribe and I will talk to you later God bless you bye